Hello, my dear kids. Very good evening. This is Sundar Rabindranathan here. <coughs> Hello, Ankita, Heshvita, Mahir, Sunita. Wow, so many of you guys. Hi, Rekha. Hello, Vinita. Pawan. Oh, Hanu Nurudin. You're from Seoul. Lovely, lovely. Welcome to Vedanta Young Wonders, all of you. Hi, Ayush. I am fine. Guys, lovely, lovely, lovely to see all you guys today. Welcome to this session where we are starting a brand new chapter, the Delhi Sultans. Okay. Why is this chapter more than important? Why is this chapter going to be interesting? It's because uh, the history of Delhi is pretty interesting. Okay. So we will deal with that. Uh, historically, right from the 12th, 13th century, what happened? Okay. And how it evolved. We will see that. So as usual, we will just leave probably a few minutes for a few more guys to jump in. Yeah, a few seconds, not minutes. All right, guys, here we go. Let me get in. So my dear kids, uh, just uh, a couple of, uh, you know, pointers about Vedantu Young Wonders. Vedantu Young Wonders, academic, non-academic, two wings are there. Academically, math, science, social and English, entire year syllabus. English is English grammar. And uh, non-academically, spell bee quizzes, general knowledge quizzes, spoken English series, etc. These are stuff that happens in this channel. Every session is live and uh, not just that, every session is followed by a quiz. So today we will be having a small class and followed by a small quiz. Uh, let me put it, let, let me not make it small, probably an interesting session followed by a very interesting quiz. Yes? Awesome. So, great place to be if you are new. All right. So, go ahead, guys, uh, and subscribe to the channel if you like this. All right. I think it's time. Let's jump in. All right, guys. Sorry. So Vedantu's best subscription, Vedantu Pro, is coming to you guys at a massive discount. Okay. So I want you guys to look at complete details. All you guys have to do is go to this link. Uh, I'll give you the link. What is this Vedantu Pro? Why should you really join it? One second, please. Hold on a second, guys, if you don't mind. Guys, Vedantu Pro is, you know, Vedantu's best subscription where you get unlimited, you know, uh, sessions, uh, live sessions, unlimited doubt solving. Whenever you have doubts, we are here and beautiful notes and assignments, everything in sync with your school syllabus. So make use of it. Uh, all you have to do is note down this link, bdnt.in slash yt pro. Go to that link and... Uh, once you go to this link, it will or this screen will open. Choose your grade. I repeat bdnt.in slash yt pro. Okay. Once you go to this link, choose your grade. Click on get subscription. See, all the features of the course will be listed there. Customized schedule for you. Guaranteed score improvement. Best teachers of India. All right. And uh, as I said, unlimited doubt solving and access to live sessions. What not, guys. Make use of it. All right, and uh, click on buy now. Before that, you can use the discount code SRPRO, S-R-P-R-O. That is the discount code, okay? Lovely. So if you enroll, what are you going to get? You guys will be able to avail sessions, live sessions by India's best teachers. All right, let me get into your the session now. Right, coming back to Delhi. Why is Delhi super important? Just give me a minute. My dear kids, I'm sure you would have analyzed the history. If you look at the history, uh, you see examples of Kaveri Delta and all, where in the south, where different kingdoms, major kingdoms evolved. Example is, Shola kingdom, which we dealt with that kingdom in the previous chapter. Is it not? Now, 
why are we not speaking anything about Delhi and what kind of kingdoms evolved in or you know uh, were there in Delhi at that time? There was no news of Delhi in the picture primarily because Delhi started evolving as you know uh, a major uh, place to note to be noticed only in the 13th century. I repeat so the evolution of Delhi started only in the 13th century and that primarily happened due to the uh, rule of the sultans and that is this chapter all about the Delhi Sultan typically some five six dynasties are there in this chapter we will deal about those five six dynasties what they thought about themselves what were their pattern of ruling and um, their histories how you know records were maintained a lot of stuff okay Yes, hi Pratyasha. So guys, now you know why it is. So two, two pointers for you to remember. First one, Delhi was not in the picture earlier because the evolution of Delhi, it started from the 13th century only, early 13th century. And who was responsible for that? The Sultans. So we are going to see how the transformation of said Delhi, rulers of Delhi, the Sultans, as I said, why uh, why is that we call it a circle of justice why is it so important all right so what there were two people okay and there was razia who was uh, kind of throned with okay and uh, when she became kind of a queen people did not accept that what happened she was removed from the throne what led to her removal a lot of stuff we will see clear okay Menti is very much there. Right. So now you know what is this chapter all about. Let's get into the chapter. You guys are ready? Give me a yo guys. Come on. Hi Rajendra. Wow Sneha brilliant. You are indeed brilliant. Okay. Sarnalata, anyhow, I'm going to talk about it in detail. Do not worry. So guys, I think I spoke to you. It was only in the late 12th century, Delhi came into the picture. It became an important city. And why? Okay. Number one, it became the capital of Rajputs. We call it as Tomara Rajputs. There were almost six dynasties in Delhi, guys, which ruled Delhi starting from the 12th century. We will deal with every dynasty in this session. So everywhere quiz question might come in. So watch and listen very carefully. Okay. So Tomara Rajputs capital. Okay. Delhi became the capital of Tomara Rajputs and it happened to become an, a very important commercial center. Now guys, uh, may, many, many rich under their rule, many rich Jaina merchants. They were there. They constructed a lot of temples. A few of them are still there. Okay, kind of excavated. Uh, coins. We also got during excavations, we got coins which spoke a lot about Delhi. Okay. Wide circulation of the coins as well. So typically, it all started in the 12th century, in 13th century, late 12th century, as I said. 13th century, Delhi came typically under the rule of sultans. You call it as Delhi Sultanate. Okay. And inside Delhi, Delhi was not just a small state, you know, a, a city as we see it. It had, it was a huge locality and Delhi Sultans built many cities, pockets of cities inside Delhi. Okay. Now who are they? Guys, this is an important slide. The rulers of Delhi. So when, so let us start with the first rule, Rajputs. When it comes to Rajputs, okay, it started in the late 12th century, I told you guys. Look at it, Tomaras, right? So till 1165, Anangapala, Chauhans. This Chauhans, we, you, I hope you guys remember Chauhan, Prithviraj Chauhan. Do you guys remember? You also call them as Chahamanas. Do you guys remember the previous chapter? These Chauhans were also called as Chahamanas. So they were also ruling Delhi. We dealt with what Prithviraj, who was Prithviraj Chauhan? Yes, 
in 1175 till 1192 17 years he was ruling delhi so now under rajputs who are tomara rajputs anangapala chauhan prithviraj chauhan chauhan is typically a dynasty you know i would say uh, it's a kingdom all right so you also call them as chahamanas prithviraj chauhan was one among them okay so look at it 1165 1130 till 1192 62 years these four rulers were there they fall under the rajput dynasty so rajput dynasty the moment we say four names have to come to your mind tomaras anangapalas chauhans and prithviraj chauhan okay so now are you clear about rajput dynasty rajput dynasty these four has to be there in your mind now turkish dynasty we will also see about turkish dynasty the turks kutbuddin so look at it exactly after 1192 this these people you know their rule almost got over the turks who started from 1206 to 1290 84 years it was under the rule of the turks who are they kutbuddin you i have also given you the pictures for you guys to have a look at it kutbuddin aibak samshuddin okay iltumish he is called iltumish not t will be silent samshuddin iltumish razia we will uh, speak a little about razia razia was a woman the one woman okay who ruled almost for four years and she was dethroned for different reasons okay that discrimination and prejudice as you see right that was there and the last one to rule delhi was giyasuddin balban so who are there the turkish rulers 1206 kutbuddin aibak 1210 shamsuddin kutbuddin shamsuddin razia and giyasuddin kutbuddin shamsuddin razia giyasuddin q s r g all right clear you can quickly create a mnemonic for q s r g the if so if you want to know guys can someone quickly tell me a mnemonic to remember q s r g all of you yeah who was that beautiful garima well done yes also called as a slave dynasty guys one person anyone kutbuddin shamsuddin riya razia and giyasuddin okay 1206 to almost 1287 so almost what 81 years right typically it is 87 was marking the end till 1290 it was okay now guys the third was the from 1290 kalji dynasty started so rajput we have seen four rajputs tell prithviraj chauhan and then we also saw the turks the turkish rulers five of them right uh, and then now coming to from 1290 it started with uh, kalji dynasty okay kalji there are it's very simple to remember 12 30 years 1290 to 1320 guys of course i know that it is kind of overloading information for you after this slide it will come down don't worry all you have to remember is only these three so kalji only jalaluddin kalji alauddin kalji only two people 1290 to 1296 6 years 1296 to 1316 alauddin so almost what 20 years so this two kalji dynasty was there guys we we are going to read in detail about them so don't think that you know why is sir giving me only names first you need to remember what all dynasties were there once you have a clear feel and you get them stored we will deal with what was their style of ruling okay so from 1290 jalauddin kalji and alauddin kalji right so how much time almost 30 years from 1320 tughlaq dynasty started 
you famously it is called tughlaq darbar tughlaq dynasty started 1320 till 1388 68 years giyasuddin tughlaq mohammad tughlaq firuz shah tughlaq 60 years all right 6 so 68 years tughlaq dynasty was there guys i repeat rajputs turks kaljis and tughlaqs four so kalji was kind of a short rule of 30 years tughlaq or you know they almost were ruling for what uh yeah almost 90 what yes 94 years tughlaq dynasty so guys now look at uh, you know this is one place one uh, you know area which was ruled by so many dynasties but all of them in the in that similar period of 12th you know late 12th century till early 14th century yes now okay there were a short time for a short time we had said dynasty and lodi dynasty though they did not mark a, a huge huge impact but they are also you know if you look at said dynasty uh kisr khan was there khir khan as you call it 1414 to 1421 and lodi dynasty 1415 to 1489 guys from late 12th century till lay uh, you know late 15th century 300 years 300 years these people were ruling delhi the sultans of delhi their rule late 12th century till late 15th century in fact almost early 16th century almost 300 plus years they were ruling six dynasties we have dealt with namely rajputs right turks yes kaljis tughlaqs four said and lodi six dynasties were there who overall formed the delhi sultanate now we are going to deal in detail about them till this are you guys clear i know that i have stuffed you with a lot of information to remember you can always but however it is a must for you to remember so my suggestion is my dear kids please go through it again and again atish i was focusing on the session so that is the reason i didn't look at your chats at all so guys six dynasties it was were ruling delhi for more than 300 years late 12th century till early 16th century so all you have to remember is these are the six dynasties and now we will deal about the ruling style now we will know about the delhi sultans in detail tell this are you clear give me a yo disha uh anyone else who is not clear everyone is clear superb now let's find out about the delhi sultans so six dynasties are see why i am repeating it again and again just for you to have that reiteration in your minds rajputs they started they are the ones who started it all right so rajputs and turks major okay yeah so now how uh, finding out about the delhi sultans how what are the evidences that we have what kind of proofs this be excavate and discover inscriptions coins architecture they provided us a lot of information guys in all these inscription there are you know a lot of histories autobiographies now we write for ourselves right there were people sitting and writing it for the rulers okay they were called the tawariks now everything was written in persian so what was the language that was used for administration persian okay and these people who wrote this tawariks right they were very very learned scholars okay so secret example secretaries administrators poets poets and courtiers okay and what you know what they did they kept a record of history and kept advising the rulers about what you are doing right and what you are doing wrong 
they are like uh, today's analysts we have right business consultants right who look at how the business is performing and they tell this is where you're going right where you're going wrong similar to that okay so they are called tawariks very learned men okay so what are the three proofs uh, three ways in which we understood about delhi number one inscriptions number two coins number three architecture to know about delhi these are three very important pieces of information uh, or sources which give us information about delhi persian was the language of administration the authors the learned scholars they are called as tawariks they kept recording events and analyzing them giving insights on what is going wrong what is uh, you know going right to the rulers okay okay guys during the sultanate rule i want all of you to remember this very carefully during the sultanate rule they had something called as a birth right privilege which was so so unfair when someone is born itself they have certain rights if they are born in the rule you know kind of uh, if they are born in the family of rulers they have certain privileges right from the birth if there are male if any male you know you call it as boy is born they have certain rights by birth however very sad if female children are born there are different kind of very deprived rights very less okay so gender distinctions were also there give an example nobles you call them as nobles nobles are people who you know who were born in certain uh, distinct families at high levels right they have their right uh, to rule what the moment they are born in different families it's called a birth right privilege by birth itself they are given that right doesn't matter what is their skill what is their education what is their intelligence nothing number 2 gender distinctions ashish come on ashish i am focusing on the session it's a very important session sneha we will it's a good idea guys guys we will do something i will plan a session in case you you know you guys might have doubts in different chapters also we will plan some sessions on uh chapter wise doubt sessions do you think it's a good idea chapter wise doubt sessions in case we do that you can ask doubts in that chapter i'll be able to answer them exclusively we'll spend time on that yes good let me plan that okay however let's complete this series and then we will go for doubt sessions overall every chapter or we can even do that during our revision sprints after this okay right so gender distinctions were also there men were always considered superior to women now so guys it didn't start now it all started that time itself now we are saying women are not given equal rights when did it start it started way back 1000 years ago is it not okay now speak let's speak about this tawariks the histories that were written right they are called tawariks they lived in main delhi these tawariks they learned scholars they often wrote the histories of sultans for rewards they write the biographies as you call it for rewards from the sultans and however they since they are so learned literate and educate you know uh, intelligent they kept giving lot of ideas uh, suggestions okay uh, to ensure that the rulers do really well okay and they kept rule you know advising the rulers on what is the right way the ideal social order because of birth right gender distinction what are the likely things to happen a lot of wrong things are likely to happen right okay and they the their ideas were not shared with anyone else so tawariks are the hist- you know you call it as learned scholars who write the biographies of the rulers for rich rewards and they kept advising the rulers on what all things are happening because of the birth right and gender distinctions
Kids, kids, kids. Come on, come on, come on. We will go for Menti, okay? Right. Guys, you know what they said? These Tawariks? Look at the, you know, their ideals. They said, kings cannot survive without soldiers. If a king is not having any army or soldiers, easily the kingdom will fall. Naturally, number one. However, for soldiers to be there, you need money because you have to pay salary. Correct? For soldiers to be there, you need money, you have to pay salary. For salary to be there, you need to collect taxes. Agreed? And for taxes to be there, who will give the taxes? It is mostly the common people, peasants at that time. Uh, right, so peasants have to be happy to give taxes. So, if peasants have to be happy, you need to ensure that the entire kingdom is fresh and fertile. Okay. So king, only if you give, you know, rule the country with perfect justice, you will find that the peasants are happy. If they are happy, they will pay taxes. If they pay taxes, you will have money and you can pay salaries, keep an army of soldiers. This is their advice of Tawariks. You know, I mean the, those historians to the rulers. Are you clear? Hey guys. Omenda. Okay, so we do not have information, Omenda, on at for at those, you know, at that time who was collecting taxes. Okay. However, there were a lot of taxes revealed, uh, levied. Who collected it? No. Uh, Okay, don't worry, I will not ignore. Guys, now coming to one ruler called Razia Sultana. She was the daughter of Iltumish. Okay, she became a Sultan in 1236. But there were the gender distinctions, is it not? They did not care about gender distinctions and she became a Sultan. Okay, because Miraji, Minaji Siraj, she, he felt... Alright, he felt that she is more capable and qualified than all her brothers. Razia Sultana. Do not forget. Okay, in 1236, she became the Sultan. Didn't last for a long time. Because all the scholars around who created those gender distinctions, that partiality, right? They said, no, 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 no. We are not happy. You cannot overrule or bypass the gender distinction. A woman is a woman. So bad, isn't it? And she was removed from the throne in 1240, just in four years' time. Okay? No, 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 no. She was not killed. Radnya? No, no, no. Okay. Sneha, brilliant. All the very best. We also have letter writing at 8 p.m. today, guys. How to write formal, informal letters. Many times it's important. Uh, when we say letter, in the digital age, you can even consider it as an email, right? How to write a formal email, informal email? So, I am going to teach you letter writing. Okay, you can always apply that concept, the strategy for writing formal and informal emails. Okay, coming back to Razia Sultana. Now you all know what havoc or what damage these gender distinctions can cause. Clear? Right, so Minaji Siraj, he was a ruler, he thought, he thought, okay, the queen's rule went against the ideal social order created by God. He was the one who put her, okay, and however he said, no, 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 though she was capable, uh, it, uh, we are against the social order which was created by God. No God created that actually. Women were supposed to be subordinates to women, uh, men only. And he, they themselves removed Razia. So, again I repeat, look at that sentence. It was so disturbing, is it not? He thought that the queen's rule went against the ideal social order. What is that ideal? It is a, uh, a bad ideal, right? And they blamed it on God here. Yeah? They said it was created by God. 
where women should be subordinate only to men. How bad it is? Sad and bad. All I can say is that. Kids, once again, a quick recap of the entire thing. All right. Guys, listen. Quick recap. Very quick recap. Delhi. All right. It all started. Delhi came to the picture, came to light only in the late 12th century. Okay. There were six dynasties which were there in Delhi. Right. So, overall, all these dynasties put together, that rule was called the Delhi Sultanate. Tomara's Rajput dynasty who were Tomaras, Anangapalas, Chauhans and on Prithviraj Chauhan, who was also a part of the Chahamanas. These four people were there. Rajput. Turkish. Okay. Turkish, we had five people. Kutbuddin, Shamshuddin, Razia, Balban and Nazruddin Mahmud. Five people were there. Early Turkish rulers who ruled Delhi. So second... Third is Khaljis and fourth is Tughlaq. Fifth is Saeed and Lodi. These six rulers put together, they formed the Delhi Sultanate. So I have... Now, what do we know about Delhi Sultan, their lifestyle? What, how did they you know, rule? We have evidences of inscriptions, coins, architecture, with which we gathered a lot of information. And most of the information was in Persia. So, Persian was the language used for administration. And there were very literate scholars who kept advising. They are like second, and second in command for the king, rulers. They kept advising the kings how to do and they also wrote the histories of the rulers for rewards. Clear? So, there were two things, birthright privileges and gender distinctions, which were two bad policies at that time. And uh, yeah, so the Delhi, you know, the uh, the Tawariks, they kept the scholars kept advising that the king need to ensure they rule with justice so that the peasants are happy. They pay taxes with the taxes. Let's have money, pay soldiers and have an army. Clear. And one small information is due to this gender distinction. Razia Sultana who was throned by Minaji Siraj as the ruler of Sultan, as a Sultan was dethroned in four years time because he himself felt it was against the order of God which doesn't make sense at all. Okay? Kids, everyone clear? I think I did a complete recap or all of you very very clear with what uh, you know this part of uh, the Delhi Sultans part one. Give me a yo guys, we are going to jump to Menti. Lovely. Since there are a lot of information that you have to remember, I, I wanted to do a complete recap. That's why I did. Hope it was useful for all of you. Super kids. Now let us jump into... Menti, for people who are new, let me tell you this. Guys, you have to open a new tab. Don't close YouTube. I repeat, don't close YouTube. Open a new tab. Type www.menti, M-E-N-T-I.com. Menti.com. Hi, Prachi. Pranjal. There were a lot of inscriptions and that history, you know, you call it as books that were uh, recovered, right? From By the Tawariks. We call it as Tawariks. Tawariks is the history, right? In that, a lot of information was there as the, that the taxes were collected, what kind of advice was given, to, uh, you know, to the, by those scholars, to the rulers, a lot of things. Clear? Hi, Ananya. Many more happy returns of the day. May God bless you. Kids, here we go. With the Menti. So, once you go to menti.com, it will ask you for a code. 
The code for today's Menti quiz is 891743. I repeat 891743. Yes. Satya Ranjan. All you have to do is open a Chrome tab. It will still work. Type menti.com. Joined. Guys, I'm going to start the quest. Be ready. Come on, come on, come on. Ashba. Many more happy returns of the day, Ashba. May God bless you. Hi, Mamta. Nahulan, Nahulan, I think I have told you. Open a new tab, type menti.com and once you go to menti.com, it will ask you for a code. The code is 891743. My dear kids, don't close. I see many of you are closing YouTube. Don't do that. Hi, Ramesh. Many more happy returns of the day. May God bless you, beta. Satyaranjan, you can even in your phone, you will have uh, Chrome, right? Open Chrome. Type menti.com. It will still work there is what I am saying. Or you have to download menti app. Ashba, I just wished you enjoy your birthday, okay? Hi, Penguin. Right, guys, let's start. Question number one on your screens now. Which ruler first establishes capital in Delhi? Tomara Rajput. Chauhan, Khalji, Turkish. I'll, I'm not going to say anything. If I have taught well, you guys will choose the proper answer. Otherwise, I am a bad teacher. Good guys, that's my boys and girls. 262 of you got this right. Keep it up. So now let's look at the leaderboard kids. Anchal, Adarsh, Saili, Bishwadeet, Rushi, top 5. Abhijay, Aryan, Gautam, Croc and Harshal. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Guys, are you ready for question number 2? Here we go. Getting it on your screens. Now. What was the language of administration under the Delhi Sultans? Urdu, Hindi, Persian, Sanskrit. Come on, Lakshmi. Don't ask me a clue for this. Such a cakewalk question. So smooth. Kill it, guys. Come on. Time is up. Persian. Wow. Everyone is choosing Persian. Keep it up, guys. Superb. Well done. 286 of you got this right. So now after two questions, where are we? Anchal, still at the top. Menti King, others, top, you know, number two. Rushi, number three. Saili, number four. Arushi, number five. Wow, guys, awesome. Gautam, Satyam, Harshal, Hermoin. Hermoin, <laughs> nice name, legend. So six to ten. Guys, question number three on your screens. Here we go. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Jumping in. 
Hi Manya Thakur, many more happy returns of the day. May God bless you. Who was the first slave king of Delhi Sultanate? Razia Sultan, first slave king of Delhi Sultanate. Alauddin Khalji, Khutbuddin Aibak, Iltumish. Think, think, think. Wow, awesome. Awesome kids, awesome. Good, good, and I back. Most of you got this right. 207 of you. Now, others to, at the top. Rushi at number 2, Harshal number 3. Adars Kumar Ranjan. Is it both the same others? If that is the case, please remove one ID. Srinu at number 5. Satyam, Durga Shri, Avni, Jessica, Ashe. And Mol, hi. Okay. So 6 to 10. Next question. Who succeeded Mogamad bin Tughlaq? Under Tughlaq rule, we dealt with few, right? Gyasuddin. Firosha, M. Batuta, none of this. After Muhammad bin Tughlaq, who was there? Who ruled? Delhi. Guys, fourth question. Come on, come on, come on. Time is running. Feroz Shah, Giyasuddin was the last one, guys. Come on. <clears throat> Feroz Shah Tughlaq. I for detail. I for detail. Remember when I was showing, that is the reason I was repeating all those things so many times. For you, it might sound boring, but those are very important questions. Adars, Rushi, Durga, Harshal and Avni. Top 5. Srinu, Anmol, Pokemon. Insan, triggered insan, Rutu. Guys, 6 to 10. Question number 5. Here we go. The question is, which of the following was not a Rajput king? Tomaras, Anangapalas, Prithira, Chauhan, none of these. Come on, come on. Tricky, tricky. Again, I repeat, tricky. Think and answer. None of these guys, all three of them were Tamaras, Anangapalas, I had Chauhan, right? The general, general Chavamanas and Prithviraj Chauhan. All of them I said they were Rajput kings. And wonderfully most of you got it right. Keep it up. 157 of you. So. Adars. Rushi. Durga Shri. Avni and Pokemon. Top 5. Mansini. Anushka. Pratham. Bumblebee. And Rutu. So, others is well at the top, well set. Looks like it. Let's see. Question number six. Who was Minaji Siraj? Minaji Siraj, artist, archaeologist, chronicler, architect. Who was Minaji Siraj? How many of you chose option C? I want to know. Hey guys, come on, yaar. you guys are awesome. Keep it up. Wow. 225 of you got this right. He is a chronicler. He is the one who throned Razia and dethroned as well later on.
Other still at the top, guys. Wow. Uh, Rushi, Durga Shri, Pokemon, Anushka, top five. Avni, Bumblebean, Arushi, Rutu, and Parth. Next five, guys. It wasn't it very interesting? Probably we are getting into towards the closure of the quiz. Here we go. Seema Thakur, many, many more happy returns of the day. May God bless you. Have a great year. Which among the following is the main source of information of the Delhi Sultanate? Inscription, coins, architecture, all of this. Can I ask you a last, uh, a, you know, a simpler question for the last one than this? Hi, owner of Roblox. Come on. I never ignore you, beta. Come on. Wow. Yes, guys. All of them, right? We had inscriptions as proof, coins as evidence, architecture. All these things speak tons about the Delhi Sultanate. So, after, so after the seven questions, where do you guys stand with respect to the leaderboard? Others is winning the quiz. Wow, well done, others. Many, many congratulations. It was a great, great job. Today was an awesome show. Keep it up. Right. So, 6,939 mammoth points. Followed by Rushi. Great job done, Rushi. Durga Shri, Avni, Das, Deepak, Path, Darsha, APS. All of you. Wonderful job done. Keep it up, guys. Great job done and I hope uh, you guys enjoyed the quiz as well. Yes, many congratulations to you for making it to the leaderboard. Guys, in case you're finding it like uh, kind, kind of struggling to make it to the leaderboard, it's okay, don't worry. All right, keep trying, you will reach the leaderboard one day. So guys, I hope did was this session informative and interesting for all of you. Come on, come on, come on. Give me a yo so that I'm all motivated for the next letter writing session. Hi Piyush, all the very best. Whatever help you need, just ping us. Lovely kids, thank you so much. Sudhir, many more happy returns of the day, Sudhir. May God bless you. Guys, do not forget to hit the like button and let us know you liked it. And newcomers, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much, guys. Lovely, I'll meet you all at 8 p.m. without fail for a beautiful session on different kinds of letter writing. Okay, bye-bye.